So in this episode of the podcast, I'm going to talk about three circles that change everything, how you see the world. I know that's a strange title, but stay tuned. You will not see the world the same way again after listening to this episode. You are listening to The Leadersmith, Darren Gertis. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about three circles that help you understand how the world works, okay? And I know that's kind of a bold statement. That's quite a, uh, a promise for this episode, but just stay with me. Okay, so I was on Facebook the other day, and I saw somebody post something that it had three concentric circles. So there's a large circle, a smaller circle that touches the top, but only goes down to about the middle, and then a third circle that also touches the top that only goes down about 10%. In the large circle, it says the total value you produce. In the second circle, it said the smaller circle inside it, it says your income. And in the smallest circle in there, it says taxes. <laughs> and the meme was somebody saying, why are you mad about this pointing to taxes instead of this pointing at the total value that you produce as opposed to your income? And I thought... How backwards? I mean, this is just, and so this was on a friend of mine, um, uh, Facebook friend's uh, page. Now, this Facebook friend is pretty left-wing, liberal, progressive, whatever. And all their friends were chiming in about, yeah, and I just didn't have enough common sense not to chime in. I just had to say, like, this is erroneous. This isn't where you want to go. And, and they were all wanting to beat up on me about that. And that's that's fine. Um, well, what do you mean? How do you mean? The, 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 I mean, look at how small taxes are as opposed to the value. You, you're not understanding what you are talking about or what you're arguing here is essentially Marxism. I mean, <laughs> Marx is going to look at the difference between your income. He's not worried about taxes. He actually wants to tax it all, but he's not worried about that. He wants to look at the difference between what your income is and the value you produce. And he's seeing that difference as surplus profit stolen from the laborers. Now that's, that's the way that Marx processes this kind of thing. And it's actually a wrong way of thinking about it. Now, I'm going to talk about how you should be thinking about it in a about three different ways. First, I'm going to talk about taxes. Then I'm going to talk about uh, the actual, you know, what you should be thinking about as your income as opposed to your, what, you know, the value that you produce. And then I'm going to talk about how a salesman should be thinking about sales. Okay, so the first one is taxes. And I reproduce this and again, I understand that it's hard if you're just listening. If you're watching this on YouTube, because I put these on YouTube as well, then it makes a little bit more sense with the visual, but I'll do my best to explain it if you're just listening. Um, so the taxes, then income, and then the total value you produce. So we're going to start with the the largest circle again is the total value you produce. The second circle, the uh, you know half size circle, is your income, and then the small circle is taxes. Okay, now taxes. How taxes really work? It's really not this small circle that's only about a tenth of the thing. It's actually for the average person about a third. I mean, it, it's actually much more of your income. Maybe 20, 29% is one of the figures that I saw for the average American's taxes. And in fact, you know, we, when you're thinking about it, think about this. Federal taxes, about half the population doesn't even pay federal taxes. So, <laughs> I mean, they're below that line of federal taxes. So, federal taxes, 96 per, um, 96% and 97% actually in 2021 uh, of the federal taxes are paid by the top. 50%. So when you're complaining about taxes, yeah, the productive are those that are complaining about taxes. Okay. Now let's go on to the next thing, how income really works. So here's again, the model, there's the total value produced as the large circle, then your income is a smaller circle and then taxes. Okay. Let's ignore taxes for now and focus on the other part of the equation. So the total value you produce um, if you can expand that instead of thinking, oh, I'm not getting all the value that I produce, like I, I don't get all the value I produce, but I also don't have to do certain things, right? Students are sent to me and I just talk I'm, and I get to do what I'm expert at rather than having to go find students and having to market and having to, you know, do all the administrative, you know, accounting and all the paperwork, right? I don't have to do all that. I just do my job. And so my income is for me doing my job. Now I have, I understand that I have to produce a lot more value. Let's say twice as much value in order for them to keep me on. 
That's the way the world works. And if I want in any field, now this isn't just me in my field, in any field, if I want to expand my income, I have to expand my value. I have to expand the total value that I produce. And guess what? If you do that long enough and far enough, you push those frontiers of your value production out far enough, your income naturally has to expand as well uh, because you will be offered that because you're producing so much and your taxes will go up as well, but you'll have far more income than taxes in that process. Does that make sense? So that's how income works. If you want more income, add more value to everyone around you. Don't gripe about how you're not capturing it all. Don't think about that at all. Just add more value and you will have more income. Now, Peter Senge, uh, he's a, a, I used one of his books in one of my classes. He's a MIT professor. He said, how do you know what people value? Well, you watch what they buy. How do we know what products to create? Well, it's based on what they value. <laughs> okay, there you go. And if you can pair that, you can get there. And then if you are the person producing, Peter Thiel said this. He said, creating value isn't enough. You also need to capture some of the value that you create. So let's go back to that same three circles because it's explanatory of everything that's out there. So here's how sales really work. Okay, so first we looked at that tax thing and you know, stop griping about that. Now we talked about if you want to get more income, create more value and you'll create more income. But here's how sales works. Here's total perceived value, circle number three, that big circle. Now, if you try to sell a product that is, you know, let's say you think that it's total perceived value is uh, 150 units um, and you try to sell it for 200 units, whatever that is, you try to sell for more price than value, you're greedy. You're not going to get a sale. Okay. That's the way sales works. But if your total value is 150 units, let's say, however, we're counting this and your price is only 70 units, maybe about a half of that. Guess what? You're going to sell those things all day long because the total perceived value is so much that they're happy to give you half of that value so that they can have more. That's how sales work. Everyone benefits when you're engaging in that process. And then the government's going to benefit too because the government's going to come along and hold its hand out and get its taxes. That's how the government works. Okay, so this leads me to a final thought. This is the quotation for contemplation for today. Day. And this is looking at it not from you, the point of view is the, of the salesman, but by, by the point of view of the uh, person buying the product. Warren Buffett said this, price is what you pay and value is what you get. I mean, isn't that true? If you buy a thing for $29.95, you're hoping to ha capture more than $29.95 worth of value. You're certainly not going to only, you're not going to buy that thing if you can only capture $20 worth of value. And if you can get $80 worth of value out of that $29 product, you're thrilled. Guess what? So are they if they can create it for $29 and sell it to you because they're going to capture some value back in that process. But look, there's a bonus here and I'm going to give you more value in that three circles. The three circles works everywhere. Think about here's how politics works. The total perceived value, number three, the big circle, per your uh, your constituents, okay? The way that they see the perceived value, if that's large, guess what? As that expands, your rise and electability as a politician expands as well. So does your opposition. That's the third little circle and it grows in accordance. These aren't necessarily proportional, but this is still how it works. Leadership works the same way. Um, your total perceived value to your followers. If you care about them, you treat them a certain way. If you're taking care of their needs, helping them achieve their objectives, all those things that you should be doing as a leader. As you do that, your perceived value expands. And guess what? Your stock as a leader also grows as well. Your ability as a leader grows as you expand your perceived value. So you enlarge as a leader as you help others. That's the way it works. Now, that small circle is still there. Those are the naysayers saying you can't do it, or who's he to be a leader, or what's he thinking, or whatever else. But if you think in the three circles, the three circles would be a pretty good guide for life in how things work. Okay, so remember, the first, the large circle is value. The second circle is what you actually achieve or capture of that. And the third, well, that's taxes, naysayers, or uh, opposition, whatever it is that's trying to take back from you. 
Okay, that's all that I wanted to share with you today. Thank you for spending the time with me. I hope that I added value to you in this discussion today, and I hope that helps you become the kind of leader that you will want to follow. Thank you.